What's up boys, Shane here, and today we're going to be going over the best guns in Battlefield 4 in 2022. Now, I did this video back in 2019, but I made some updates to it, I put in some honorable mentions, and I'm sure plenty of people are still playing Battlefield 4, and some people are definitely still getting into it now, especially with the somewhat flop of Battlefield 2042. So I thought I'd kind of revive this, bring back these best guns, and kind of give a guide to a lot of people that are getting into the game. Now, I am still playing Battlefield 2042 a little bit. I'm doing a Road to Colonel series playing Portal only, so pretty much on Bad Company 2, uh, Battlefield 1942, and Battlefield 3. Uh, so check that out on my channel, subscribe if you are new here, but without further ado, let's get into the best guns in Battlefield 4, as well as the honorable mentions. Now, this is going to be every single class and a couple weapons from every single uh, weapon type. So first, we're going over shotguns. Um, the only reason why I picked this first is because I feel like these are probably the best they've ever been in the Battlefield franchise. The shotguns in this game are really, really powerful. And I just want to go over some of them in this video. Um, so yeah, we're going to be going over every weapon class. I'm just going to spend uh, like 30-ish, 40-ish seconds on every single weapon. And obviously, this is my opinion. There's still plenty of good guns in this game. But you definitely won't go wrong using these weapons if you decide to use them. So the first weapon is the Dow 12. This is a very fast firing shotgun that you can get feeds with super easy. And it's just semi-auto with 12 rounds in the magazine. And it's just very spammable and has good one-shot kills as well. Now the best shotgun for feeds in my opinion is probably the UTS. Uh, slash going on really long streaks. It has a 15 round magazine that can be reloaded pretty quick as you reload it into the left and right hand side of the gun. It's a one shot kill out to pretty incredible distances for a shotgun. And as you can see on Operation Locker, I just go on a really good streak with it, just mowing down people left and right because of how uh, fast this gun kills at long range and mid range. It's a one shot kill in most of those areas. And beyond that, it's going to be a two shot kill at pretty much every other range. Now next is the original 870 MCS. This is the first shotgun you unlock, I believe but it's still extremely powerful. You can reload it pretty fast. It has an eight round magazine and it's a pump action shotgun that does a ton of damage. As you can see, I just absolutely smoked that guy there. That's not an example of this gun's killing potential. I don't know what is. And again, most of these are on locker, but on most infantry maps or even infantry objectives, you can use these shotguns to pretty good effect. Now, the next series of weapons that we're going to be looking at is the snipers. I want to get these snipers and shotguns out of the way the one-shot kill weapons. Now, most of these snipers in this game are pretty similar, and most of them are one-shot kills out to about 5 meters, and then beyond that, they drop their damage down to 59 at long range. So they're going to be one-shot headshots at pretty much every range, except for the Scout Elite, I believe. So just avoid that. Beyond that, they're pretty much all good. Uh, the SV-98 is just a pretty solid overall sniper. That's the first one I picked, and as you can see, I'm just quick scoping a ton here. I really love the reload on that weapon as well. Um, but next you got the M40A5, which is probably the best close quarters sniper. It doesn't have the fastest bullet travel speed, but you can quick scope some guys really well with this weapon. And uh, yeah, it just has super fast uh, aim down sights, time for quick scoping, and a really fast fire rate. Um, and I'm also showing off the G18 in these. I go over the pistols last, but the G18 um, I was using with my sniper, so I thought I just might as well get some of the gameplay out of the way for that as well. And the G18 is a pretty good pistol, just full auto pistol, super fast fire rate, and a very fast time to kill. Now, the next sniper rifle we're going to be going over is the M98B. Now, this is probably the best long range sniper in my opinion. It has a very fast bullet velocity, um, but the reload speed is not fast, or the fire rate overall. But you can still do some stuff in close quarters, as you can see I quick scope this guy off the head glitch. Um, but yeah, you're going to be wanting to use this weapon at long range. Um, instead of close range for sure um, but you can still get some good kills in close range and quick scoping as you can see with this next clip i quick scope this guy at a decent range and then just finish him off with the g18 i definitely recommend using some sort of fast firing pistol as your secondary or just go a completely different route and use something like the shorty just to get one shot kills as well last sniper we're going to be going over is the srr 61 uh, this one is just again a pretty good overall sniper sort of like the sv98 uh, and it brings back the intervention memories from MW2 as well. So I like using it th for that reason. Um, it's just a super fun weapon to use. It got some nerfs along the life cycle of this game. There was one point where I'd say this was for sure the best sniper in the game. Um, but it definitely got some nerfs. And it isn't quite what it used to be. But it's still a very fun weapon to use. And if you just want a sort of good overall sniper for close and long range, i definitely try this one out. 
Now next we're going to be get going over the assault rifles, arguably the best class of weapons in this game. And the first one we're going to be going over is the AEK. This is definitely the fastest killing uh, besides the FAMAS, but the FAMAS is sort of pretty impractical because of its long reload speed and its small magazine. So the AK is probably the best close quarters assault rifle and if you have an aggressive playstyle, just deals out a ton of damage really quickly. And it's just a super fun weapon to use. It's, you'll see I start mowing down people uh, down this hallway on Locker. And it's definitely good for close quarters uh, maps like Locker and Metro. Um, I definitely pick this weapon over any other assault rifle for these maps. Um, in addition to this though, shotguns would also be good in this scenario. Um, but yeah, the AK just has a really fast fire rate. You can kill people super fast. The only downside is if you run out of ammo, its long reload speed is pretty cumbersome. But besides that, you can just melt people with this gun. Um, yeah, and the next weapon we're going to be going over is the LED-5A2. Uh, this weapon is just a very good overall assault rifle. Um, it doesn't do anything particularly insane. It's not the fastest killing up close, not the fastest killing at long range. But it just has a good medium range time to kill. And it has a pretty fast reload speed. And it's just satisfying to use. I really love the bullpup weapons in this game. And this is probably the best one. The only downside to this weapon is it is a DLC weapon, so that could be an issue for some people. Uh, next is the Ace-23. This actually got some nerfs towards the beginning of the game, but then it got a um, ammo capacity buff, so it has 36 rounds in the magazine, so that does definitely give it an advantage for getting fees and stuff like that. But just, again, it's sort of like the L85, a good... Um, sort of medium range assault rifle it does pretty much everything well it doesn't kill the fastest up close or the fastest at long range but it's up there in both of them it kills in like the top five fastest up close and it definitely kills one of the fastest at medium range as well especially if you're tap firing and hitting your shots definitely a fun weapon to use and if you haven't tried it out i would definitely recommend it i believe it's one of the later assault rifles you unlock or it might even be a dlc one i can't really remember i've had the dlc for so long can't entirely remember which ones are the DLC and which ones aren't, but it's definitely an assault rifle worth using. And lastly, we're going to be going over the M416. I would also recommend the AR160 for long range, but I just didn't feel like putting it in here. That's more of an honorable mention if you're wanting to play a very long range role with the assault rifle. I don't use it much. I'm more of a sniper if you're just going to be playing like long range like that, or even uh, a DMR. But yeah, this M416 is again just like the um, L85 and the Ace 23, but it has a very fast reload speed. Uh, you can be back in the fight super quick with this weapon and do a ton of damage at mid range. Now, next, we're going to be go going over the PDWs in this game. Uh, these weapons are not too good and they're exclusive to the engineer class, like how the assault rifles are exclusive to the uh, medic slash assault class. But the first one is the SR2. It has a pretty good time to kill. I believe it's one of the only SMGs that's either a four or five shot kill. I can't remember which one, but it's one of the highest damage SMGs in the, in the game. And it's definitely fun to use besides its long ish reload time. Now, next is the AS Val. This weapon is a suppressed uh, PDW. Um, it does a ton of damage though. Uh, but you're only going to be able to get 1 to 2 kills per magazine because it has 20 rounds in the magazine. To make up for this, it has a super fast reload time that will help you counter that uh, small magazine. So if you're just getting 1 kill at a time, dipping and dodging behind cover like I am on Locker, you can be very effective with this weapon. Uh, this weapon was a DLC weapon, so if you don't have the DLC, you won't have access to it though. Now next is the CZ301 or CZ301. Uh, this weapon kills extremely fast, and you'll see how fast they kill the enemies. It shoots at a thousand rounds per minute, which I believe is the fastest in the PDW class and one of the fastest in the game. And it's really good for just mowing down people really quickly. Now, next we're going to be moving into the carbines. These are all kit weapons, uh, but I mostly like using them in the engineer class as sort of mid-range weapons, especially since the PDWs aren't that great. Uh, the first weapon is the AK-5C. This is one of the best guns in the game because it can be used for every class. It's just super versatile. It's almost like an M416, um, but for the carbine class and can be used on all classes. It doesn't kill quite as fast as the M416, um, but it's still a very good weapon. Now next to the ACWR, this fires faster than the AK-5C and is good for a close quarters carbine. I believe these are like the only two carbines worth mentioning to be honest. Um, they're both quite good, and the rest of the carbines really just don't stand up to them. Um, the ACWR fires at about 800 rounds per minute and does almost assault rifle-like damage 
at close range and the damage does fall off a bit less than assault rifles at long range i believe down to like 14 instead of 18 but it's still very effective at those ranges and i definitely give it a try if you haven't already since it's the second unlock in the class i believe uh, the ak5c and the acw are you unlock early so there shouldn't be too many issues with that now next we're going to be going over the lmgs they're really the only one that i'm looking at is the aws uh, this has a 101 round magazine, fires super fast, is really good with a suppressor, and you can reload it really quick. There isn't too many LMGs that are close to this weapon, however, almost all of them are pretty good. I definitely take a look at the 200 round ones, like the M240B, and some other weapons that are really good for flanking and going on super long kill streaks. And there's as well some that you can do some really good damage at medium range uh, with the bipod, like the Type LMG. Um, but yeah, there aren't too many ones that compete with the AWS, so that's the only one that I threw in here. But I assume that if you guys are used to LMGs, you can pick pretty much almost any one that has a large magazine. The ones that um, sort of have clip-fed magazines that are like 50 rounds or below aren't too great in this game, so I stay away from those. But you can pretty much use almost any LMG in this game. Now next is the DMRs. Now this is a very troubled class in Battlefield 4 in my opinion. There aren't too many good ones. There are three shot kill at every range, meaning that they don't kill really fast enough up close to do any damage. And at long range, it's really hard to hit three shots sometimes on someone that's sniping at you or stuff like that. So L DMRs in this game are not too great, but there is one that does stand above the rest statistically, and this is the QBU. This weapon is very good statistically, and it can do a ton of damage in a very short period of time. You'll see how fast they kill some people, but... The way they countered this is that they only gave it an 11 round magazine. So it has the best bullet velocity, one of the best fire rates, some of the best damage in the game, um, and the best like accuracy, but it only has an 11 round magazine. So it makes it hard to go on kill streaks with this weapon, but if you can just get one or two kills at a time and you don't have to worry about reloading, it is still a pretty good weapon. And I definitely like it in this game. And as you can see, I absolutely melted that guy. Now, next, we're going to be looking at the Mark 11 mod. This is just an, an sort of overall, like, mid-tier um, DMR. It just has some of the best all-around stats. It's not really too good at anything specifically, but it's pretty good at everything. And that's sort of what you're looking at. It's kind of like the AK-5C of the DMRs, and uh, that's why we're looking at it in this video. Oddly, I sort of just got a bunch of close-quarters kills with it um, in that clip. Um, but, yeah, I just thought I'd just include that because it was the only clip I had of this weapon. Now, next we're looking at the SKS. This weapon is a very viable DMR. You can fire this super, super fast, and this is meant to be the close quarters DMR. You can see on Locker and other maps like that, you can go on super good kill streaks with this weapon, and I just use it with a one-time scope and just absolutely melt people. I'm using it on the Medic class, which is something that's really good with the DMRs as well, as they are all kit weapons. So you can use them on any class, and that does give them a slight advantage where you can use a medic weapon that's really good at mid to long range that you normally wouldn't be able to in the SKS. And again, despite saying that this weapon kills super fast up close, it's a three-shot kill at every range, but you can get, get a quick two-shot kill if you hit one headshot with this weapon. Um, I get revived here and I end up going on a pretty long streak on Locker, and I just sort of wanted to talk about this game in general while I'm doing this. There's still a couple hundred thousand people playing this game, and that's why I decided to do this video. Um, I know the Battlefield content on this channel hasn't been too great of late, but as we're waiting for Battlefield 2020 or 2019 news, that's really all we have. Um, when Battlefield 5 finally releases the Pacific Theater, I might go and try it out, but Battlefield 5 just really isn't doing it for me. I feel like... While Battlefield 1 made World War 2 fun, Battlefield 5, I mean, made World War 1 fun, Battlefield 5 kind of made World War 2 a little boring. But we'll get back into this video. I'm, As you can see, I'm switching to the Shorty 12G, and this is sort of the transition into the secondaries. This weapon is really good, and it's a one-shot kill shotgun. It only has three bullets in the magazine, but if you just need to switch to a secondary and get a quick kill, it is really good. Next pistol we're going over is the M9. It's probably the best semi-auto pistol with a large magazine. You can use your trigger finger really fast on it and get a decent amount of kills. Um, and yeah, although I would say I definitely don't recommend the single fire ones or at least the single fire weapons that are like three or four shot kills on this game, I just find that they're, they really don't compare to like the G18, the Shorty, the Deagle other sort of high damage per second weapons like those but if you really want a semi-auto weapon i would definitely recommend the m9 
Now next is the Deagle. This is a Dragon's Teeth DLC weapon, so if you don't have Dragon's Teeth, you won't be able to use it. But this weapon is a 2-shot kill up close and a 4-shot kill at long range, and it just kills so fast, as you can see there. And that's pretty much the reason why you want to use it. And lastly, we're going to be going over the 93R. That's pretty much it for this video, guys. This weapon kills super fast, and that's all I really got to say about it. It's a semi-auto, or sorry, a burst fire weapon that shoots a 2-burst and kills very fast. So now, these aren't necessarily the best guns for every category, but here are some honorable mentions for some solid weapon choices in Battlefield 4. This is the MPX. I really love this weapon. It's a pretty fast fire rate, uh, although not too fast. A uh, low recoil weapon that does high damage up close. It also has a really good hip fire and a fast reload speed, and it is definitely one of the best PDWs. Um, now the next gun we're going to be getting into is the CS5. So a lot of you are mentioning this is the best close quarters sniper, and I'm including a clip from one of my best montages from a few years ago where I'm using the CS5 because I definitely used to use it a ton. Um, so yeah, the CS5 is definitely a good close quarters weapon, and you see me use it on locker here. I honestly did really prefer using it in hardcore as well, um, since you can quick scope and be stealthy and stuff like that, um, and when you're on hardcore, you're pretty much never getting hit markers with this weapon. Um, except at the really, really long range, you'll leave them with one health if you get a hit marker. But I just really love sniping with this weapon in close quarters on Locker and Metro. Um, next, we're going to be looking at the MTAR. This is another good carbine, definitely up there with the ACWR in style. It's a fast fire rate carbine that does pretty good damage, but it more just makes up for the, its lack of damage and it's just pure fire rate and speed. It has a bullpup design, but despite that, it still has a pretty fast reload speed. I mean, it has really good hip fire, and the recoil is not too bad on this weapon. You're not going to be beaming people at long range like the AK-5C, but again, it is a very good close quarters carbine, and probably better than most PDWs anyway. So if you're trying to use a weapon in close quarters engagements, I would definitely recommend trying out the MTAR if you haven't already. This one was definitely mentioned by a ton of you guys in the comments of the last video, and I personally do prefer using the ACWR and the AK-5C, but as far as like maybe a third best a carbine or even a second best uh, to compete with the ACWR, I definitely think that the MTAR is up there. So I included it in this video. Next we're going to be looking at the F2000. I definitely should have included this one because it's a very high damage assault rifle. This weapon fires very fast at around 800 rounds per minute, I believe. Um, and it can just melt through people. You see I kill this third guy so fast. Uh, this weapon is a very, very good weapon. The only downside pretty much is its reload speed and some of its recoil at long range isn't ideal. And even its hip fire for a bullpup weapon is not insane. Um, but it's definitely a good weapon. And if you haven't tried it already, I believe you have to unlock it um, through one of the DLC assignments. Um, so you can probably just look that up on YouTube, how to unlock the F2000 if you haven't already. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a weapon worth using. And again, a weapon that just slipped my mind was the Scar H. This weapon is a tank. It used to be probably the best gun in the game, um, or one of them when it was a three shot kill. Um, but they buffed the time to kill in this game and made pretty much every weapon a bullet uh, longer to kill. And it definitely hurt the Scar H a little bit. So it's like a four to six shot kill, I believe. Uh, but most of the time we're going to be getting that four or five shots to kill. It has a moderate fire rate at I believe around like 600 rounds per minute. Um, but it is very accurate in uh, mid to long range. Um, and it can still tank people up close. And <laughs> you see me going for those uh, shorty 12G kills as well. Um, but yeah, the Scar H is a very, very fun weapon to use. If you haven't tried it, it's one of the first assault rifles you unlock. So it's not too hard um, to get going with it right away. And I would definitely recommend using this weapon as it's a very high damage assault rifle. Next, we're going to be looking at the Gold Magnum. I have some super long range sniping, or not super long range, but I have some classic sniping, uh, just hard scoping onto a, an objective. Really, how snipers would be in like the military, for example. Um, for example, the CS5 clips was just me running around quick scoping. This sniping is a lot more long range and a lot more classic battlefield, um, but I do have someone rush me up close later in this clip. The Gold Magnum, to be honest, is not a top tier sniper in my opinion. It's not that good in close quarters because its fire rate isn't that fast. And at long range, its bullet velocity does not compete with like the M98B or the SRR. But it used to be one of my favorite sniper rifles, especially when I unlocked it. Um, and a lot of you did comment about it, so I decided to include it. But statistically, it is worse at um, long range than the M98B. And up close, it's worse than the CS5 and the M40A5. 
but it's definitely not one of the worst snipers it's a pretty mid-tier sniper and it does everything decently like it's better up close than the m98b it's better at long range than the m48 5 it's just sort of an in-between sniper rifle it's not going to be your best for a specific scenario but it's pretty good at a lot of different scenarios so i would keep that in mind and i just kind of quick scope that guy as well <laughs> So next we're looking at the Air 160. This is a pretty quick clip. I just got a nice three piece on Silk Road. Um, this weapon is a pretty good long range assault rifle. I honestly have barely used it. I didn't have many attachments unlocked for it, but I've heard many people, including YouTubers and stuff who used to follow this game, uh, talk about how good this weapon is at long range. So I definitely try it out if you're looking for a good long range assault rifle. Next we're moving into the Bulldog, and this weapon is an absolute tank. This is one a lot of people were wanting me to mention. Um, this is probably a slightly better version than the Scar H. Um, it is also a four shot kill similar to the Scar H and its fire rate is not that fast, but it does have a faster fire rate than the Scar H. And for a bullpup weapon, it has a pretty fast reload speed. Um, you can run through people with this weapon. Um, it's a tank up close and at medium range is pretty good. Um, at long range, you're gonna have trouble finishing people off, especially with the smaller 21 round magazine. Um, but the weapon is still a very good assault rifle. Um, I believe this is a Dragon's Teeth assignment, so if you don't own the Dragon's Teeth DLC, you won't have access to this weapon. Um, and the F2000, I believe, was Second Assault. So some of these weapons are DLC weapons, and that is partially why I refrained from mentioning them in the first video. Um, but since a lot of people do have the DLC, I thought I would mention it in this uh, honorable mentions part. And now next is the UMP45. Honestly, I ha had not used this weapon too much. But I saw some of you commenting it, so I decided I'd use it. And this is a very, very high damage weapon um, for the class that it's in. For the SMGs, this weapon, or the PDW, should I say, this weapon does a lot of damage. Um, it has a slow fire rate. It's very accurate at medium to even long range. Uh, but up close, if I threw a laser sight on this weapon, I would just be running around hip firing people. And this weapon does absolutely melt people in some instances. So. I definitely think it's a weapon worth trying out if you haven't, especially if you're looking for a better mid to long range PDW uh, than the ones that I've previously mentioned. But again, boys, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to go through a few more weapons that I forgot to mention in the other video and a few weapons that you guys suggested. Don't forget to tell me down below what kind of videos you want for Battlefield 4 on this channel. But that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.